Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another episode of Trail Makers, where we are on the workshop looking at some of the top-rated creations for whatever reason. And uh, we're going to be starting off with this guy right here. <laughs> So this is an absolutely beautiful robot chicken called the Clunky Yellow Chicken Robot by Erosin. It looks like it was a collaboration between him and Straybound who created uh, some of the mechanizations parts about it. I can does English. All right, well, let's get back on this thing. And I love how it actually kind of looks like a saddle here. <laughs> and let's start walking around and see how it goes. <gasps> can we just, can we, can we give some appreciation for the googly eyes on this thing? Like, just look look at in the beak too the, uh oh uh oh oh um i think I, I i think he may have detected the sarcasm in my appreciation there here let's, let's get back up here all right so we also got some buttons oh look at that it's like one of those uh one of those dipping bird things i don't remember what they're called but they do that kind of they do the in the into the water it's a it's it's a thing okay all right we also have space oh it flies it's a chicken that flies. Oh, I just... Oh, oh, wait. Can we actually go forward in the air, too? I think we are. I I think we are. Uh-oh. Oh, we have an acrobatic air flying chicken. Okay, let's see if we can land ourselves nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Oh, oh, gentle, gentle. Look at that. Is that perfect or what? <laughs> you know what? I wonder... How resilient... Is this chicken, do you think? If I walk this thing off of a cliff, do you think it's gonna survive the landing? All right, I've spawned myself over here. We're gonna, oh, oh. Chicken. Hey, chicken. Hey, chicken, wake up. Wake up, chicken, chicken. Oh, I forgot, we can fly. <laughs> if I fall over, I could just fly up onto my feet. All right, but when I jump off of whatever I'm on right now, oh, that went beautifully. That was a really- uh oh Oh, no, we fell! <laughs> I didn't mean to fall yet. Um... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, chicken. Now he kind of looks like a swan. Where are you going? Hey! What? Chicken? Oh. Uh, chicken? I hear you. I don't- s Chicken? Chick- Are you up here? I hear the sound getting closer. Chick- Chicken? What? What are you doing? What? You're still going? Chicken? Ch chicken's gone. Chick. Um. Okay. Chicken has left the game. Uh, time to get on to another creation. <laughs> okay. Up next, we have Spinning Top by Magos Albjorn. Now, the reason I want to look at this one is because I've tried to make spinning tops before and the methods I've used haven't worked that well, so I never made a video on it. So I'm going to see how effective this thing is and what kind of methods uh, Magos used here. And apparently we can extend and retract some arms to experiment with conservation of angular momentum. So not only is this a spinning top, but it's also a science experiment. So let's science. All right. Oh, good, good start. All right. So I think space is to start at spinning. There we go. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, okay, yeah, this is actually, this is similar to the problems I was having. There seems to be, like, a top speed of spinning when it comes to using thrusters. And even though I feel like the thrusters, the momentum should keep building up since there's not a whole lot of resistance going on with, um, with, like, the ground resistance or air resistance, I think. All right, so now T. Let's see what happens when we press T. Oh, yeah, look at that. So, the conservation of momentum, uh, as we expand ourselves, it basically slows down our spinning as more mass goes away from our center of rotation. And you can see it gets faster when we go back in and go back out. So that's what kind of what happens when you see, like, the figure skaters, when they do, like, the really, really quick spins and then they tighten their body in. Uh, this is, this is what they're doing. They're just, they're just a spinning top just like this. How they don't get dizzy, on the other hand, is, uh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. You know what? Let's just, let's just see what that feels like. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And ready? We're going to start spinning faster. Oh, you can see it go faster. That's actually really cool. Okay. I'm not, Are you getting dizzy yet? Go ahead and hit the like button for getting, for getting dizzy. Okay. I'm actually, this is too much. I'm, oh, no. Oh, no. It's worse. Okay. Here we go. I am not a figure skater. So why don't we move on to something a little bit less dizzying. All right. Up next, we got the white hypercar by Hugnastadk. 
Pugnastad K. Why does everybody always have a difficult name to pronounce? So it's actually been a while since we've looked at hypercars. Uh, so this one apparently goes 320 kilometers an hour. So let's crash it. All right, so here we are at my favorite straightaway to test out some top speeds and look at the profile of this vehicle. We got the tail fins. Like those are interesting spoilers, like a spoiler concept right there with the tail fins uh, horizontal like that. We got massive tail lights for whatever reason, a quad exhaust in the back. We got two different wheel styles. We got the uh, standard wheel in the back and the motorcycle wheel in the front. Some interesting design choices here. I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing go through 120 kilometers an hour. All right, hold on to your seats. Here we go. In three, two, one, we're off. Mm, there we go, 200. Holy cow. Holy cow, 300, 310, 300, and 90. <laughs> Wait, what? How did that not explode? What did we- oh no, our wheels are not doing- our wheels are not doing well. I only saw it get up to 319. So, so far, this is just not at all living up to its uh, claim of 320 kilometers an hour. But I'm gonna give it another test. We're gonna go in this direction. Hopefully we won't be stopped so abruptly. Let's see if we can get up to 320. Here we go. 300. Oh, there goes our wheel. Uh-oh. Ooh. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, that was so great. Okay, we really need to- I really want to get this thing up to 320. Let's try it from here. Okay, here we go. Come on. Stay nice. Nice and steady. 300. 3... Oh, oh, oh. Stay straight, straight, straight. 8, 9, 19, 20! There we go! 21! We beat it! 22! Whoa! Oh, and we didn't crash that time! Oh, we lost both of our front wheels, though! <laughs> Oh, that was fantastic. Okay, you know what we gotta do next. You know what we gotta- we gotta take this thing off a ramp at full speed. Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. As long as we don't crash into the ramp too hard and actually could get off of it. All right, here we go. This is- this thing's actually- it's maintaining control pretty well. Oh, here it goes. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> We like pancaked and just spread out on the ground. That was awesome looking. Okay, you know I gotta do that again. And this time I'm actually gonna try my best to aim straight. Cause I think if we're going just the right speed, we might be able to like uh, thread the needle with that sign on the other side of the arena here. Here we go. Oh, go on. Oh no, no, the bar. Ooh, oh, we wouldn't have made it anyway. And how did we survive that? kind of, if you call this surviving. All right, but you know this thing. Oh no, oh no, oh no. As I was saying, you know this thing can do the loop no problem, right? All right, and whoa, that was actually kind of an epic launch. All right, we'll zoom in here for the crash landing. <laughs> it's just so satisfying when you just see it like crumple piece by piece into debris. All right, and that is more like it. And then, whoa, totally meant to do that. That was completely on purpose. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put this creation away. I always have too much fun with the hyper cars. Just the sheer amount of speed that we're capable of going is just always. Oh, 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 oh that was good. You know what? I'm actually curious. What happens if I head-on collide into one of those crates? They're not static objects completely, so I'm kind of curious to see what effect it has. All right, here we go. And... <laughs> our seat... It was like our seat wasn't even effect. Look at the crate just comes flying in. Oh, our seat just kept going by itself. That was great. All right, now, now, now we definitely got to move on to another creation. Sorry, I'm having way too much fun. I hope you guys are having just as much fun as I am when you're seeing this stuff. Okay, so since we're near the water, let's go with the Stealth Submarine R1 by Red Death 23. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Here we are. All right, check this out. So we got our pitch and we got our roll. Uh, left shift and left control. Oh, interesting. Okay, so left shift and left control uh, do the diaphragms, the buoyancy things. So if we if we just sit here and then we activate them full force, full force, then we go up and we can go back down if we don't activate them. And I think, I think that's all of our controls. And we can, sh oh, I didn't, I actually don't think I've ever shot weapons underwater before really. It's so quiet. All right, but why do you have thrusters on the top? 
that that's the one question is it is it for like oh oh hold, is it for like surface level speed or are we supposed to be able to fly yeah it definitely uh can it fly i don't think it can fly i yeah i cannot stay up in the air but my guess is that it's supposed to be for some t kind of like controlled surface like this there we go there we go oh no i lost it it's difficult. It takes some skill to do that. But this is a pretty cool looking sub. Imagine just like, you know, being underneath the surface. They can't see you. And then you very slowly just kind of surface up. And then you rain down your destruction on your enemies. And they cower in fear as you do the dolphin dive in and out of the water. <laughs> it's kind of hard to take it seriously. Like, threateningly when you're doing these like, these dolphin dives. <laughs> It just looks too graceful to be threatening. All right, but speaking of being in the water, we have a super realistic paddle boat in all caps by Ajuspatam. Septam. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> all your names make me feel so illiterate. Wait, wait, what? What? Paddles back and forward. That makes sense to me. Paddles up and down? What, what does that even mean? How do you paddle up and down? If you're a paddle boat, you go on a horizontal plane. You don't go up and... Can this fly? Well, there's only one way to find out what that means. Oh! Oh, I get it. So it's completely like... It's like manually controlled. So if I just go forward and back, I kind of just... I, I just push myself back and forth in space. So I need to go like this, then lift up, then go forward, then let it down, and then do that. Wow. Okay, that is a lot of controls. It, well, really, it's only three. I mean, you can also go... I mean, is there a benefit to going all the way down? Hold on. All right, let me let me figure out what's going on here. All right, there we go. Then we do that, and we go down. Oh! <laughs> these, these paddles are super effective. They have so much resistance in the water. Here, go down, and then... Huh, we can actually jump out of the water with these paddles. Yeah, so when he says super realistic paddle boat, like, he means, like, you gotta control it realistically. It's not automatic at all. So the turning is actually on a, uh, on a servo. It would be even more realistic if you had to control each paddle e individually. So then the turn, you had to do, like, the... You'd have to do each paddle in a different direction to turn, and it would be, it would be difficult. So yeah, this thing is already just, like, a coordination nightmare for me to figure out, but I think... You know, once you get into a... Oh, there we go. I'm in the groove now. Oh, no, I lost it. I'm out of the groove. I'm not feeling very groovy at the moment. But yeah, the coordination isn't the easiest thing to get the hang of, but you can get into a groove once you get used to it. All right, here we go. I'm going for the groove. I am going for the... I am in the groove. Look at this groove. How groovy are we right now? All right, I'm going to stop using the word groove. Okay, moving on. We got a transforming futuristic hover car by Louis Storm. I think... I think I did that name right. Wait, but then down here it says Creator Phaser. Which one of these is your real name? All right, so apparently space is to transform. So I'm gonna get some speed. There we go, and then we're gonna press space. Whoa! 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 Oh, bo oh no! Oh, that. E so it's like a hovercraft that's like literally just it just hovers. It hovers pretty well. And then you press space and it turns into a flying, more compact car. And then you use arrows to do pitch and roll. But there seems to be a conflict with the, some of the servos when it comes to the pitch. You can see the collision happening there. But it seems to work pretty well. And it's actually like super stable. When you do the yacht and stuff. Oh, is that because of the hover pads are on the... Wait a minute. Yeah, I think the hover pads uh, colliding with the fins underneath like that, I think that makes us super lightweight. Whoa! Even without thrust, I can go up. This is this is really cool. Yeah, I think it's definitely take advan taking advantage of that hover glitch. I can't even go down. All right, look, what happens if I press space again? Are we going to go back down? Whoa! Whoa, we're falling so fast now. Yep. That's why they go in. Oh, that is actually, there's so much more to this than I thought it was. Look at that. Yeah, the hover pads, that's why they come in to create a flying and more like stable car in the air. Because they come in and start applying a force onto those uh, tail fins that are horizontal. Yeah, there's a lot more to this than I expected there to be. That's actually super cool. And it looks awesome too at, at this compact shape. All right, and then we should be able to go back down. Man, oh man, the controls. 
They just open up so much when we transform like that. Okay, I got one last creation for you, and you guys may recognize the name if you saw a previous Best Builds episode. This is by Agent, Agent West, the True Trailmaker Mark 7. Now, a few episodes ago, we looked at the True Trailmaker Mark 4, I believe? And it kind of created like a double uh, road system using the concrete block spawners, and it was super complex and super cool. Apparently, he's revised it and revised it, and now I think it's a monorail type thing? But it does the same thing, uh, spawning in some concrete blocks and creating its own path. And apparently, he's made it a lot more effective and less prone to error than our, that last version that we checked out was. So I think with a single button press, we can start it. And then if we want to, we can change the direction of the track as it goes between up and down and left and right. So I'm super curious to see how well it's gonna do compared to the previous one. All right, I mean, check this thing out. This is such a unique looking creation. All right, I'm just gonna press the space button. Here we go. All right, I'm letting it run now. I'm literally, I'm letting it, it's doing its own thing. I have no input from this point on. This is all happening by itself. Do you understand that I'm not doing any of this because my hands are here? Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's working all by itself. In case you didn't realize, this is just the creation doing it and not me. Like, I'm not putting any inputs into it. Is this getting redundant yet? Okay, good. That was the point. Okay, but now I'm going to start putting some inputs into it. I don't know when I should do it, but I'm going to try to curve upwards. Okay, I'm just going to hold W. Do I have to hold it? I think I might have to hold it. Okay, yeah, I'm going to hold W. And it should start. This is working perfectly. Look at this. We're going to start curving up. This is amazing. This is actually kind of amazing. Oh, it's having some trouble, but it's sensor based. It's not timing based. So no matter what, it should keep working. Like, look, all right. I haven't even taken a good look at what's going on here. So the wall spawns in, it centers the wall using those. It waits a certain amount of time for the wall to solidify as a solid object. And then it lets go of the wall. While that's happening, you also have a center mechanism in, this, in the middle of our creation that centers us onto it and keeps our wheels up there. We got these wheels on the side keeping us in line as well. Look, we're still curving upwards. All right, I'm gonna try to straighten out now. More than straighten out, I'm gonna curve downwards. So we're gonna start leveling off, I hope. And then I'm gonna try a left and right curve or just a horizontal curve after we straighten out. Look at how Look at how solid this track is. The curve is so smooth. This is way easier to use than the last version. And it's a monorail, so that's just a big bonus in and of itself. All right, we're almost straight. I think we are now officially uh, straight. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to start turning ourselves left. We're going to see how how the curve looks going left. All right, you know what? I'm gonna let this, uh, I'm gonna time lapse this. I'm gonna let this time lapse a little bit and I'm gonna make like an S bend and see how that looks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are still going. As you can see, look at this track. So not only did I curve to the left, I curved back to the right and then curved up because we seem to be drooping down a little bit. And it's it's been absolutely flawless, even as it still goes now. And I'm about to level off and start going straight. Like this creation is just, it's probably one of the more impressive creations I've actually had the pleasure of trying out. So good job on this, man. It, it, I think you're right when you said that it's pretty much flawless. I have encountered zero flaws. So that to me meets the definition of flawless. 
So do you guys have a favorite creation out of everything you've seen in this episode? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know what you're looking forward to seeing in future episodes. If you missed any of the previous best builds episodes that show awesome creations like this, then go ahead and check out this playlist on the end screen right here. And uh, I hope this video has earned your subscription. This has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.